Today, my journey takes me to the beautiful coast of North Wales. Wales might have 1,700 miles of coastline, but the fishing industry here is pretty tiny. It only produces about 2% of Britain's total catch. But there's a shellfish in Wales they have in abundance, and that is the mussel. And here in Conway, they're said to be as good as they get. Well, let's see what all the fuss is about. This beautiful historic town is like stepping back in time. Not only in architecture, but in the way they fish too. I'm out on the water with Trevor Jones, one of the local mussel men, whose family have been fishing the estuary for generations. Legally, in this area, they have to use a traditional raking method as opposed to the more modern trawlers or rope-grown mussels. So show me how it's done then, Trev. Yeah, OK, there were the rakes on the bottom now. Yeah. And you've got to sort of work it along the seabed. You can feel the mussels. So what are they attached to underneath? Well, they're attached to little stones, cobbles, things like that. Some yeah. days you find a better pattern than others. So it's still largely hit and miss. Well, you obviously know where yeah. you're going. Yeah, I've got a good idea where we need to yeah. be, but it is hit and miss, yeah. yeah. Is it quite secretive? I mean, would you tell your mate over there how many you've got? No, if I was on a good pass now, I'd tell him there was nothing here. <laughs> Did you? Yeah, oh, nothing here. And he'd do the same, yeah. Would he? Oh, wow, look at those. Wow, look at that lot. Look at that. You happy with that? Yeah, yeah. So all the dead ones here then, or the ones that aren't good enough, yeah. you chuck them back there? Yeah, not here, we'll take them all up to oh, okay. back to Conway with us and then they'll be sorted up there. And the ones we want we'll keep and the ones we don't want we'll bring them back down. The oh, so that, do you? Yeah. Do that again? Yeah. Trevor's son, Tom, is based at their processing plant today. He's learned the trade from his dad. The mussels will arrive every day, be purified in filtered seawater before being sold. So far, these have been in the tanks now for 48 hours. What's this stuff here? This is, uh, the, the mussels create this themselves with, uh, there's a protein and that from it. Ah. So they've created that from being in here. So when you go to the beach sometimes, you see it blowing on the beach, this yeah, is this? Yeah, that, that's what it is. It's a good sign. It shows oh, that it? all the mussels are alive as well. Oh, look at that one. Yeah. If that's dead, it would be, it'd it'd be, be open all the time. Wow. And that would just go in with it? Yeah. They're used to living in water, so obviously if they're alive and they get taken out of water, they'll close to protect themselves. That's good. Cool. Put if it you back pop in. that back in, it'd open again and filter again. Really? So this is the last part of the process uh -huh. now. They're going to get it clean now, and then uh, bag ready for market. Okay. Can you give us arm there? Yeah, yeah. Just, just chuck him in here. Just all in? Yeah, all in. Obviously you're the new age of this business. Yeah. Are you going to take it on and carry on, do you think? Or? Yeah, hopefully, yeah, as long as uh, the market's there for yeah. it and we can stay in business, I, I'll be doing it for the rest of my life. And your kids as well, hopefully? Yeah, yeah hopefully I'll carry it on as well with, uh, with my kids. Well, we see it from start to finish. It's been a really interesting day, but I need to take a couple of kilos myself. Yeah, no problem, Phil. Can you sort it out? 450? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry, I'll pay you. <laughs> These are about half the price of supermarket mussels which goes to show that it's always worth looking at local suppliers for a bargain. With a taste for that, I'm heading west of the stunning Menai Straits by Anglesey. The waters here are renowned for their cleanliness, so much so that the sea salt carries the Soil Association's organic certification. I'm meeting Jung Haider, an expert in foraging wild food from the coastlines and mountains of Wales. He's usually commissioned to find for top London restaurants, oh, and the Queen too. But today, he's helping me find the rest of my lunch. So what actually is foraging? Well, foraging, I suppose, it's something we've been doing for hundreds, if not thousands of years. It's in all our blood. Uh -huh. And uh, it's really searching out uh, wild food. Well, do you have to be careful what you're looking for? You've got to be extremely careful. There are so many plants that look like other plants. Uh -huh. How do the things that you forage for go with seafood, you think? down by the sea, naturally sea vegetables or vegetables growing on the shore here or above the tide line are obvious uh, complements to a, a seafood. Yeah. Can we go pick some? We certainly can. So this here? This is it, sea purslane. Oh, it's lovely and it's a very easy plant to identify because of the woody stems to it. Can I try one now? Please do it. I think you'll find. Oh wow. Rather good. The burst is like salt flavour. That's lovely. It looks like a cabbage. Well, I mean, you hardly need to use salt when you're cooking with your plants. No, that's safe. OK, next one. Just above the seashore and on the lane here, 
we've got this beautiful plant, Alexander's. So what we're looking for is right down here, the base of the plant. Just cut right at the root. So not the top? Not the top. You can eat the leaves, yeah. but they're really quite bitter. What do you think of that? Wow. That always has a sweet flavour to it. So again, just above the tide line, uh -huh. we find this amazing plant, sea beet. As you can see, a lovely thick leaf. It cooks really well. With all our sea vegetables found, Yud and I are going to cook up a recipe to perfectly complement my Conway mussels. Now, it's a very simple process. This is the beard, and this is what attaches the mussel to the rock or the rope so it can't get off. And you need to just, with a knife, get rid of that as well. And the barnacles start at the top, and just with a knife like that, scrape the mussel clean. It's very simple. If you get any of them open like that, and just run away. The chance are they're dead. Um, snap it. What I've got here is chorizo, and I love it with mussels. I think it, it works also beautifully with oysters. But I just think that into the pan, nice hot pan, not too much because it's quite pungent. We'll just get that cooking down a little bit. And then your Alexander's. Switch out there now. Colour, look at that. Well, we've also got the sea purslane. At this point? I reckon it's simple as that. Okay, cool. Like that, and then we'll have special wine. I'll let Chef judge it. <laughs> like that. Lid on. And I reckon that'll take about four to five minutes. Right, while they're cooking, we need a side dish. And we're going to gently poach the sea beet, aren't we? Or steam it. That sounds good, yeah. Right, they should be cooked now. They are huge, aren't they? They're impressive mussels. Aren't they just? That. Now it's good enough for the Queen, so hopefully. You'll enjoy it. This is an absolute first. Mmm. That was quite special. Eh? Wow. I'm really blown away by that. I'm pleased. Gosh, that's fantastic. Wow. Available on the coast near you. Food for free. <laughs> <laughs>